Hang the bike mechanic, y'all. Let me show you how to short the travel on this. And it's actually going to look like we're servicing the lowers, which we are. And uh, sorting the travel, grace of the 140 air shaft. This kit, easy to obtain. Any Fox dealer can get it for you. And the part number is 820-02-538 kit K I T C. Um, that's how Fox does things. If you want to shorten the travel on one of these, don't try to add spacers on this NA2 air spring. And screw things up because the evil, the extra volume, the way that system works is it relies on a certain percentage of the stroke for the negative air spring. And the negative air spring is what gives you that, that free feeling breakaway. If you start adding spacers underneath your air spring seal head, it's gonna screw up the entire way the fork works. So get the right air shaft. Don't do it wrong. Oh, before I put this in the stand. Your tune ID, this one, DT, as in Disco Tango 72, DT72. Go to the Fox website, look up the parts, verify that you're ordering the right air shaft and the right seal kit. Uh, that will also take you to the information about oil levels for the open bath on the air spring side, which is 10 cc's. Damper side, which is 40 cc's of gold oil. And I'll also tell you how much gold oil to put in the air spring side to make it feel nice and squishy. Um, and then there's also details on how to rebuild the dampers and all that. Fox. RideFox.com, tune ID, sometimes you get a serial number. Fox finally stepped up their game and printed the serial number on the back of their crown like RockSox has been doing for, I feel like a decade or two. So it's about time Fox stepped it up, but this is a pretty sweet fork, so let's shorten it. All right, I just pressed pause right here, read over the tools that you need. Um, several tools plus a couple additional ones that you'll see me use to the video like o-ring clips and things like that make sure you have safety glasses all right look at this there's dirt in those seals uh, I don't like to see that and most people don't like either but you need to change those seals so remove the rebound protective cap and then remove the rebound knobs off the lower part of the fork this is a one and a half millimeter allen key and make sure there's no loose detent balls Fox is notorious for this and if uh, so, I always like to remove slowly and cup my hands so I can catch anything that might fall out. Next step, remove the foot nuts. One's a 15 millimeter on the damper side and eight millimeter on the air spring side. And then wipe the dust off. Clean as you go, prevent dirt from getting inside that fork. And now I like to use the Fox lower removal tools because they work so well. I screw these on about halfway and then I just hammer away. Uh, releases them just enough and then sometimes that crush washer doesn't like to come off. Instead of coming off with a foot nut, it comes off with a pair of wire snips. So there's a helpful hint. Wire snips, cut it in two places, and it should just come right off. Next, roll the fork down and drop that oil into your oil pan. You need an oil pan. It just, or some method for catching oil. If you're doing this for the first time in your garage, just use the oil pan that you use for your car. Next, I use a dowel of some sort. This is Delrin that you see. You can use a wooden dowel too um, and pop those seals up. These softer materials tend to not damage the upper parts of the lowers where the seal sits. That's why we use these. And pull that out and pull out those dirty foam rings. Next, I set that aside and I move over to the air cap. And I need to Take a measurement of the air pressure, and then at that point, slowly let the air out. And as you can see, the air shaft doesn't shoot straight back up into the fork. So that's why we do this. And then release it down to zero. Now, these forks, typically, if they're done service properly, the air cap and the damper cap are quite tight. So make a mental note of how much pressure it took to release those. And that'll be kind of your torque reference for putting this thing back together. Otherwise, refer to the Fox website for the torque values. So when I take this off, I like to clean up the threads, I like to clean up the seal, and I like to make sure that my air core valve, or air valve core is nice and snug. So tilting the fork back up, it's time to release the air shaft assembly. 
And you do this very last in this step just because you don't want any pressure to be behind this when you try to pop this clip. Popping this clip with air pressure behind it, it can result in some serious injury to you as you stand right in front of that air shaft. So there are some bad stories about that, and that's why rock shocks is kind of a pain in the butt to work on sometimes. Anyway, next step is take your 91% isopropyl alcohol and clean out those stanchions or clean out the air side stanchion. If you're not servicing the damper side, don't worry about it. But it's nice to make sure that the oil and the grease residue is out. So I do this twice in the video. I actually did it four times in real life just to clean it up. Make sure it is nice and shiny on the inside. And you also inspect it for scratches. A scratch will be obvious if it's nice and clean. Prepping the air shaft assembly. This is the new one, the 140 millimeter travel. I like to set up a bunch of grease. And this one is the I sorry, the Slick Honey, which Fox defaults to. And you can see how I've got a little bit of a hairdo of Slick Honey grease sitting on top of that. And then just liberally apply to the seals and everything like that. Now gently insert the air shaft assembly. Do not rush this. You can't afford to scratch these stanchions. It's very expensive to replace because you have to replace the entire uppers and cut your steer tube and all that. So install that clip and make sure it's snug by giving a gentle tug on your air shaft. And then that part's done. Now insert a little bit of oil. Use the Fox Gold oil into the air side. We no longer use float fluid for some weird reason. This stuff works really well. Make sure your top cap and volume spacers are clean, spotless when you put them back into your fork. I also like to prep the threads with some of that dynamic seal grease from Rock Shocks. It's green PTFE grease. And then establish your torque and get back to that pressure and put that top cap back on. Right now, don't worry about inflating the fork. Don't do that as one of our final steps. When you're removing the damper top cap, make sure you don't lose any balls. This is another one. Everything on the damper side, you're apt to lose a ball bearing, which is a detent. So why I'm doing this is to check the torque of the top cap on the damper side because the torque needs to be at a certain level or threshold in order to complete the pressing of the stanchion into the crown that kind of helps hold things together so you don't want that kind of thing to get loose so periodically check it if you're doing this in your garage if you take your bike to a bike shop and have your fork service there they will check it or at least they're supposed to but that shouldn't be loose and i run into those top caps being loose all the time and it doesn't matter who the maker of the fork is next step going back to the lowers clean them up clean the crap out of these things. So spray some isopropyl alcohol in and around and use several rags. And I'm gonna jam a rag down into the lower to collect grease and oil. And I'm gonna do that several times on both sides until I get that goo out. And sometimes I end up poking a thin dowel, that thin wooden one, down through the shaft ports and kind of push that rag back my way a little bit. And I like to clean up around the bushings as much as I can because stuff can hang up in there. But make sure those are nice and clean. I do it on both sides. Now prep your foam rings. They will go in last before you reinstall the fork. I like to drop them, after I stretch them, drop them into some gold oil. Now I use the Fox seal drivers because they're the greatest. They are a copy of the Marzocchi seal drivers from way back in the day, and they work the best for putting seals into your lowers. Now these seals also have a metal ring installed as part of their function and it helps them stay put. So you require a good hammer, but don't hit the bridge of your fork while you're reinstalling that. So be gentle and be methodical and place that hammer strike correctly or else you could damage the top of that, that brace. So once it's all properly seated, you will hear a firm knock. And now you can turn back to your foam rings and as you slide those into their home, their little slot, you can he see where they go, but it'll help lube up the seals a little bit and we'll wipe that down on the very last step. So make sure that there's no smudge, no grease, no, especially any dirt. Um, I mean the uppers, make sure they're nice and clean. Reinstall or install a fresh O-ring, which is your sag indicator or your travel indicator. It's just an O-ring. 
And if you don't have one in your new kit, just use an O-ring. Don't use a zip tie for a sag indicator. It just scratches up your stanchions. So you see how I rocked the lowers towards me and then back. That helps kind of just slide the lowers into onto the, uh, the stanchions. Now make sure you have the correct oil volumes by referencing that first page that I showed you, that website on ridefox.com. And insert the proper oils and proper volumes into the lowers, and that will be your open bath. Um, now this good, this kind of stuff, all this stuff you're seeing really and truly goes for the 34, the 32, the 36. Uh, some of the tooling will be different measurements like the top caps, but this method is how we do all, all service on all Fox forks. And as I'm reassembling now, you can see how I'm just cleaning and wiping the lowers and I don't want buildup of oil or grease where my foot nuts are installed because it's a lot harder to install or to clean once those parts are installed. So I like to have it nice and dry before it goes back together. So once uh, you're installing that 15 millimeter foot nut on the damper side, make sure the crush washer stays in place. A lot of time it likes to migrate and it won't crush properly. So it, actually it's just an improper install. So now make sure your torque values are correct on these lowers, on these lower foot nuts. Otherwise, you can damage and snap off these uh, shafts, and you know we've all done it, so end up having to replace those. So just be careful, get your torque values right if you are not comfortable with matching the torque. And then at this point, we're about ready to just reinstall everything, reinstall the damper, the rebound damper knobs. And this is this one has the cool dampers, so it's the high speed and low speed rebound knobs. Reinstall them and maintain the position that they were in if this isn't your fork, so that the whoever is riding this will be able to uh, get back on it and feel like it's the fork that they gave you. So anyhow, the next step is to tighten down that that fixing nut or that uh, screw, fixing screw, whatever you want to call it, and then put your clean it up and then put your top cap back on it or the protective rebound knob cap thing, whatever that thing is. And they don't have to be super tight, just snug. Super tight means you won't be able to adjust it on the trail unless you carry your pliers. So once you're done with that, the lower side of the fork is done. Now it's time to put air into the fork and pause this and read that. And if you don't do that properly, it can cause problems with the function of the fork and you will notice it, especially on rough terrain. So. Next step, clean off all that oil that has popped out of the seals or it's kind of bled out of the seals from that final part of the installation and cycling the fork. All right, guys. Thanks for joining me. All right, guys. Thanks for joining me. This Fox 36 is now 140 mil travel. And um, you saw how straightforward it is. You just got to have the right tools, some patience, finesse. Don't mess things up. Uh, just because you want to get it done quick. Uh, wait till you're not ready to go somewhere. You need to have time to work on this and do it right. Um, I have been doing these for, this is probably my 1036. I've owned probably 14 36s. Um, and this one's currently nicer than the one I can afford. Go figure. Angry Bike Mechanic coming at you.